have the June WPI data, which is flashing on your screen. So that's come in higher on a month-on-month -month basis. It's hardened to around 3.36% versus 2.6% on a month-on-month -month basis. We do have Lata in the studio to tell us more about the analysis there. Lata, over to you. Well, uh, this is on expected lines. Uh, we were not too many people give you uh, advanced estimates of WPI. But uh, I was getting a, a number of about 3.5%, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The, there is, uh, uh, it's almost there, 3.4% is the inflation. Uh, we must remember that we are starting to get positive numbers because the base is now becoming like extremely negative. All of last year we had minus numbers in WPI and that's why now you have started to get uh, positive numbers. As you can see month on month also there's an increase in the WPI number, but just look at the vegetable inflation. Onion inflation at 93%. Eggs, meat and fish, okay, that's not the uh, big number. We should be looking at the food inflation or what uh, in WPI you call primary markets inflation. Uh, food inflation, 8.7% versus 7.4%. Uh, vegetable inflation, as you can see, month on month as well, very high. Cereals inflation at 9.3%. So this is a food-driven inflation, no two ways about it. But I would want to look at the manufacturing inflation as well because uh, there could be a bit of uh, the end of the fall uh, more in manufactured products. As you can see, 1.4% compared to 078 uh, the uh, extent to which global prices are falling is uh, stopped and now there is a bit of an uh, up upside but more importantly at some point in time you know even the telecom things will start uh, factoring in and could get into wholesale prices of other things. The telecom rates is a CPI issue, it's a consumer price issue but it gets into uh, you know the costs of companies and that can also push up other uh, uh, wholesale products. So there it is. T today the story is largely a food inflation story as far as the WPI is concerned. But I think it's important to note that uh, the fall in manufacturing prices has also uh, stopped. And now you're starting to get a 1.4% uh, manufacturing products inflation as well. With that, Professor, I think we should invite the guest. Uh, Upasana Bharadwa, Chief Economist at Kotak Bank, has joined us. Uh, Upasana, this number, 3.4 uh, WPI itself, uh, uh, is that something we should worry about? Uh, because this is the one that also starts entering the GDP and uh, the uh, you know current prices of uh, GDP. Yeah, Lata, you would see that, uh, as you mentioned, the split is largely uh, led by uh, the food inflation. Mm -hmm. So th we knew that uh, WPI inflation, the base effects that were favoring it, are now beginning to be arrested and now we would be seeing higher and higher numbers irrespective and to that we of course have is the food-led inflation so overall the month-on-month -month, uh, momentum is clearly higher uh, and this may continue going into the next few months as well uh, because you know the lagged impact of the heat waves uh, and all is going to be playing out uh, for maybe one or two months more before we start seeing the impact of uh, the monsoons really on arrivals. So till we don't see really that, uh, the near-term risks on food remains and at the same time the tides, tide is already turning for WPI. So yes, it will start reflecting in the GDP deflator uh, at some point in time. Uh, from Q2 onwards, irrespective, the you know the deflation story that in WPI we were seeing is uh, likely to be now in positive and more and more positive as we go ahead. So overall, uh, you know, we could be seeing closer to four and a half to five percent readings as we exit the year in WPI okay. as well. What's your sense about CPI as well? Are you revising any numbers after the higher than expected inflation uh, in June? Lata, there are two parts to this. Uh, at this point, we know that much of the inflation which surprised us on the upside has been led by vegetables. If we do a CPI X vegetables, then it's fairly stable, uh, steady at around 3.5%. Previous reading was also 3.5% and the previous to previous reading is also was also close to 3.6%. So last three, four uh, readings, rather, most of uh, 2024 has been steady around three and a half percent plus minus a little. So I think uh, immediately we're not really looking to revise our numbers because uh, vegetable prices tend to be very volatile and we do tend to see a lot of <coughs> correction in the um, subsequent months. The important part is that the Kharif sowing is picking up pace. And uh, two important structural factors which we tend to look at in the food category is cereals and pulses. 
there the sewing pattern is very uh, uh, you know comforting and that's where hopefully you know we will see some easing out on food price pressures eventually uh, as we see the winter months and also i think through the course of the year we will see some normalization so at this point 4.5% is what we retain of course okay. at the same time we have to remember the telecom tariff hikes like you mentioned before uh, that is something which will put an upside pressure to headline but more so to core inflation in the coming uh, 2 to 3 months depending on how it really pans out uh, so the core inflation momentum is where we'll have to be much more cautious about because growth is holding up quite well so uh, apart from uh, you know base effects not being favorable for core uh, tariff hikes being reflected the core inflation getting a support from demand led is also what we have to keep in mind so i would be more cautious on observing the core inflation trajectory rather than food because food we know is very volatile and it tends to correct also equally well fair point Fair point. Actually, uh, uh, to your point about core inflation in the current index as well, uh, the manufacturing index has gone up uh, uh, 1.4 year on year, but month on month also there is a 1%, uh, uh, sorry, there is a 0.1% increase month on month. So at least the fall is over, of course, because the month on month number is slightly higher. Uh, just a final point, uh, Upasana, what do you make of now rate cuts? Uh, the governor's uh, interview was very emphatic. Uh, he said premature even when I asked him stance. Uh, but regardless, you know, globally there is, uh, uh, the U.S. bonds have now fallen to even below 4.2. Uh, ECB has already cut and probably the Fed cut is now a given in September. Uh, given all this, where would you place the first uh, RBI cut? Lata, like you said, global conditions are turning fairly benign. So let's keep that aside. Domestically, we will have to be cautious on inflation, and Governor has, uh, you know, very adequately cautioned us against uh, acting prematurely. So uh, we have been of the opinion that earliest rate cut can happen is in December, and that too we'll have to be very watchful on that. Uh, talking about the stance, if you see the financial conditions have already eased. Conditions mm. on liquidity is uh, very ample, and as a result, the overnight rates are below repo rate for most of the mm. time. Lately, so I I think you know just the a phrase withdrawal of accommodation is something which doesn't have too much of meaning till RBI doesn't really act on that. But I would say that the markets have already uh, settled to this easy liquidity for now because government is spending. This is a time when currency leakage is minimal, and we do expect that this whole quarter is going to be ample in terms of liquidity, which means money market rates remain uh, fairly comfortably low. As a matter of fact, uh, if you look at the table issuances in H1, overall, it's a net issuance, which is negative. So yeah. all in all, conditions on the lower segment of the yield curve, let's say, uh, the lower end of the curve is looking very comfortable. So the financial conditions are already benign. And I don't see too much emphasis on the need to shift their stance right away. Okay. Earlier as well, they have mentioned that they could very well possibly indicated that they could change the stance when they do the rate cut as well. So, you know, it could be a December change in stance or it could be uh, February whenever they do choose to mm -hmm. do the rate cut. And I don't right. see a rate cut possibility before December. Let's put it like that. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, some of your uh, uh, peers have also put it to next year. No cut in December, uh, no cut in 24 at all. Uh, at least you're holding out a hope uh, in December. Upasa, thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, with your thoughts on uh, the bond markets, on uh, the possible Reserve Bank policy and on the inflation trajectory. Uh, so the news from the inflation numbers is it's, it is slightly higher than expected. Uh, as far as CPI is concerned, WPI is mostly on expected lines. Three and a half was expected. But the big point is food inflation is higher and manufacturing inflation has bottomed out. So inflation is not coming down in a hurry. But that is not a very big bother because of global conditions, bond yields have remained under control and the very big trigger that we are expecting for uh, bond markets and for the cost of money for interest rates is not really from the Reserve Bank, but from the government, from the budget. And there, the government is now in a happy position of higher than expected revenues, both tax and non-tax. So there is a very big expectation that uh, the fiscal deficit will be lower and there might be, with a good chance, even market borrowing by the uh, government falling. So bonds in a happy spot, but let's see what July 23 holds for us.
Okay, all right, Lata. Thanks uh, very much for that. So that's the update coming in on the WPI data. 4.5 to 5% is what we could probably expect in terms of WPI by the year end. And the core inflation uh, trajectory is something that we should probably be a little cautious about. We'll take a short break on the other side.